I'd like to thank Timothy for, I think, hitting various nails resolutely on the head. And I just wanted to say that, um, in a way, there's a, there's a continuum in this panel, because I have led a life of blessed... Nobody's ever stopped me doing anything. Uh, I've, had, I've been very lucky. I've lived in a very safe place um, all of my life. Um, and apart from the departmental row, I, I have, I've had a very blessed uh, time. So I've been very lucky. Timothy knows, uh, particularly his founding formation was really in East Germany. So he understood the, the personal and political compromises that are honourable and dishonourable. So he, he, he's lived... I think he started somewhere very different from me. Uh, and uh, Paymiant has lived a much longer life in a much more difficult time and place. And I think we would very much like to hear your views of that, but understanding that somebody like me, blessed with a health system and ease, um, probably feels very humble. Yeah. So, Dr. Pugh. Uh, uh, as a writer, I'm a writer who reads some uh, international literature and write back for Myanmar readership some things, interesting things about uh, uh, international literature. I have written few articles about George Orwell and his books about Animal Farm, about 1984, uh, and some essays written by him, such as Shooting an Elephant or a Hanging, like that. But to sit by Mr. Ash and talk about George Orwell, it is uh, very, very difficult for me. Uh, I, I felt I'm reduced uh, to, uh, to nothing, <laughs> almost nothing uh, compared to him. Uh, I, uh, read, uh, I knew that uh, Mr. Ash has read almost all words and phrases written by George Orwell and all the words and phrases written about George Orwell. Uh, so he is a total expert, 100% expert. I, I know just a little bit. So here, I want to contribute something by talking about uh, uh, what uh, books written by Orwell are read in Myanmar. And uh, uh, what our impressions, our opinions about Orwell in Myanmar and Myanmar uh, readers. So, Orwell's books, for example, Animal Farm and 1984 and Barbie's Days are translated into Barbie's language here and read by Myanmar people. But uh, to talk about political writing, I think you mentioned, or you or some uh, critic mentioned that Animal Farm is the best writing of you, you, you wrote that. And Bami's days and others are not very uh, up to his ta uh, talent. Yeah. <clears throat> but for us, Animal Farm, Animal Farm was published, uh, tr the Bami's translation of Animal Farm was published in 1951. The translator is one of the most famous writers in Myanmar, named the Kempado. He is also a political leader, and he translated that book, Animal Farm. <coughs> and it was published by Government Press. Uh, Burma Translation Society, sponsored by the late Prime Minister Unu. Uh, that work, translated work of Orwell, the translation is an excellent one for Myanmar standard. But people do not accept, Myanmar readers do not accept it very well because 
they, most of the readers thought that it was a propaganda piece, anti-communist propaganda, they thought. And uh, one of uh, the publishers of George Orwell, uh, Golens, Victor Golens of the left, left book club, he is, I think he is partly responsible for that impression. Because many Myanmar young people before the Second World War, they uh, imitate uh, 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 left book club and they organized a similar club called Red Dragon Book Club here in Myanmar. And they distributed, they translated and distributed a lot of, maybe about 100 books, which are most about socialism, communism, like that. So most of the Myanmar people are influenced by left, left wing literature, started by Golans through the book clubs. So Myanmar people's opinion is that they, they believe in, most of the Myanmar people believed in, at that time, believed in socialism and some in communism. So when the translation of Animal Farm came out, they denounced, they say that, that is, they said that that is uh, anti communist literature written by the Uzwazi like that. So most of the people do not accept it very well. So I have to think. What is a propaganda piece and what is an artistic writing in politics? I would like to ask that question to Mr. Ash. Absolutely fascinating comment. And um, as I said, Orwell spent his whole life trying to, and I quote his own words, make political writing into an art. Uh, so that for him to have been told that he'd written propaganda would have been about the worst insult you could, you know, you, 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 you could make. I actually think that Animal Farm is his best single book. I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's a much better made book than 1984, which has some pretty, has its longer, some pretty baggy passages. Uh, some of the essays, some of the individual essays are sans pareil. And the reason is, in answer to your question, that he's found the perfect artistic form, which is the Swiftian satirical fable, in which he translates it into animals, and he actually lived on the farm, he lived in the country, he knew about animals, and therefore it becomes a universal parable about the corruption that comes with power when the pigs take over, as you remember. So I would give almost what philosophers call an ostensive definition of the dif difference between political writing as an art and propaganda. I would say if you want to know the difference, look at Animal Farm. <laughs>